Today we will talk about the wiring connection of this washing machine. However, this type of wiring is also used in other brands and the function is exactly the same. You just need to understand how it works. This is plastic wiring, which is used to turn the drain system on or off. There is no electric option in it. It is a manual system. So we will mostly talk about these three timers. This is one timer and next to it is the function selector switch. And besides that, this is the third timer. So first, I remove their knobs from here. I am going to pull these knobs towards me and then they come out. Out. Now, if we look at its display, this side is used for washing and a timer is installed on it. Then besides this, there are gentle and normal options. One of these two functions must be selected. After this, there are wash and drain options here. This is the spinner timer and it runs for up to 5 minutes after which it turns off. Whereas this is the washing side timer which runs for 15 minutes and then turns off. So now I will open all three of these timers. So now we will understand how it works internally through a diagram. So I will draw its diagram on the whiteboard and show it to you. First of all, we will make the spinner diagram. So I'll draw the spinner timer here, and I had physically shown you earlier that the timer looks something like this. So in this, there is one switch and the other point is slightly separate. So this works like a series switch. That's why it's simple. It has only two points. When we turn the timer on, these two points connect with each other and the series switch is completed. But along with the series switch, there are two wires here. I'll tell you their color code. One is a brown wire and the other is an orange wire. Now what happens is that the line is connected to the brown wire The line and neutral are coming in, and the line point is present here through the brown wire. When the orange wire is connected, it passes the voltage or current further. With this, another switch is connected ahead, which is called the door switch. So what the door switch does is this. The orange wire goes to the door switch, and after that, it becomes a gray wire. This gray wire then goes to the motor. This is the spinner motor, and three wires come out of it. So this wire is white, which is the common wire. Then there is a pink wire, and another wire that is red in color. Now what happens is that for the spinner motor, the common wire, the white wire, is given neutral, so it comes directly from the main power supply. So what happens next is that a capacitor is connected with it. It uses a 5 microfarad non-polarized capacitor, so it will be like this. One wire will be connected to the pink wire, and the gray wire will be connected to this point of the capacitor. In the same way, the red wire will also be connected to the same point. So in this way, when the switch is turned on, the line reaches here, and neutral is already present here. With this, the motor starts functioning. When we turn the timer on, the motor turns on. And when the timer is turned off, the motor turns off. In the same way, when we open the door, the motor turns off. And when we close the door, the motor starts. Now let's talk about the washing side. I'll explain it to you. Now, on the washing side, there are two things. One is a selector switch, through which we select the normal wash or gentle wash program. And similarly, it has a timer. First, we will understand how this timer functions. Normally, the timer is round, but I will draw it as a square here to make it easier to understand. So this timer depends on six wires. I'll explain to you how it depends on them and how it works. So what happens is that there is one point on one side and another point on the other side. Now, on this side, there are two wires. I'll tell you the color codes of these wires. One wire here is brown in color, and the other wire is gray. Now, the brown wire is directly connected to the line, and the gray wire goes forward to our selector switch. 
I'll draw the selector switch to make it easier to understand. Now what happens is that the gray wire comes directly into the selector switch and this same gray wire then goes forward and splits into two parts. So this gray wire is a common wire for the selector switch. Now there are two more wires present here, which I will also draw here. So as you can see, there are two wires here. One wire is purple in color, and the other wire is green. In this, when we switch the selector switch to gentle wash or normal wash, one function always remains on. The two points are never disconnected at the same time. One point will always stay on. Now, on the other side of the timer, there are four more wires. I'll explain their color coding. First of all, there is a purple wire, and this purple wire is the common point. The second wire is red in color. Then the third wire is yellow, and the fourth wire is green. So these four wires are connected here. Now, understand how this function works. As you can see, near the selector switch, there is a purple wire and a green wire. In the same way, the washing timer also has a purple and a green wire. So the purple wire of the washing timer connects to the purple wire of the selector switch. In the same way, the green wire connects to the green wire. So in this way, the function is completed here. Now I'll explain what happens here. First, I'll draw the motor. So this is the washing side motor. Three wires come out of it. One is the common wire, one is the starting wire, and one is the running wire. But nowadays, the motors that come have almost the same resistance values for the running and starting wires. Whether you measure the running wire with the common, or the starting wire with the common, you will get nearly the same value. This is because the motor has to run in both directions, so there isn't much difference kept between them. Still, for identification, we consider them as three separate points. The wire at the common point is blue in color. Similarly, for the start and run wires, either one can be used as start or run because the motor needs to rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise. So I assign colors for understanding. I mark the run wire as red and the start wire as yellow. Because wire color coding is very important, if you make a mistake, the motor can burn out or the system may not function at all. That's why color coding is extremely important in this. Now we will connect the red wire to the red and the yellow wire to the yellow. Now the connections here are almost complete. Now I'll explain how this will function and what will happen here. So first of all, the motor's blue wire will receive the neutral wire and the neutral will be present on the blue wire. So the line and neutral are completed here. The neutral goes directly to the motor while the line comes into this timer. Now all the functions will be completed through the timer. What happens is that when we turn the timer on, both points connect with each other. When these two points get connected, one point is already connected in the program selector switch because the system is designed in such a way that one point must always remain connected. One point will always remain disconnected. So now what happens is that the line passes from here and through the gray wire reaches the green wire. The green wire is used for the gentle wash. In this mode, the spinning time is slightly longer. There is no difference in the motor speed. The only difference is in the timing. The delay time between each cycle becomes longer. And in the normal function, the timing completes more quickly. That is the only difference. There is no other difference in it. But how the difference occurs here? I will explain that to you. From here, you can see that electricity comes through the green wire and enters it. Now what happens is that when the timer operates, turning on and off, the purple wire remains disconnected, so it will not perform any function. Now what happens is that through this purple wire, when these two points connect and disconnect, the internal function operates. When this function operates, the green wire connects at this point. Then, while the timer is running, the red wire also connects with it. As a result, the motor starts rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise. Then, when the timer turns a little further, the red wire gets disconnected and the yellow wire connects. After that, the electricity starts flowing through the yellow wire and the motor starts rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise. So this is how the function works, and this is the diagram. 
Using this diagram, you can easily install a six-wire timer. Now the last point to understand is this. When we change the selector switch and set it to normal wash, So what will happen is that the purple wire will get connected and the electricity will come to the common point through this purple wire. For example, if the green wire is disconnected from the selector switch, then it will have no effect on the timer's function. The system continues to work in the same manner. Now the electricity comes through the purple wire and the timer is running. Since the yellow wire is connected, the motor starts rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise. And when the yellow wire disconnects and the red wire connects, the same function happens again. The motor starts rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now we will see its practical demonstration to confirm whether it works in practice the same way as I explained in the diagram. Now look here. First of all, I had shown you the spinner timer earlier. You can see the brown wire coming here. If we look at the start point, down here, where our main power supply is, this wire will be joined with it. Then, if we look at this point coming up to the panel, you can see that it is becoming a common point here. This common point is formed in such a way that one point goes into the spinner timer through the brown wire, and the other one then goes into the next timer. Now here, the system I explained to you earlier works like this. The orange wire comes out from here, and only a series connection is made inside. Other than that, there is nothing else here. Now the door switch comes into play here. What happens is that when the door is closed, this switch gets connected, and when the door is opened and moves away from here, the switch goes down. After that, you can see the gray wire coming here and this gray wire goes down toward the motor. Then we connect our motor to it. Okay, before doing any further work here, let me explain the two types of switch systems that we have. If your motor or machine has a three pin system installed, then what happens is that the line and neutral are fixed. If you connect the line and neutral correctly in this system, it will work properly exactly as intended. But if you use a two pin system, it becomes quite difficult to identify the line and neutral. If it is written like this, the way I have written it, then it's fine. Otherwise, in my opinion, no one really pays attention to where the line should be connected and where the neutral should be connected. That's why in such cases, it doesn't matter much where you connect the line or the neutral. But if you are using a two pin system, then these things do matter. So try to use a three pin system because it ensures proper function and correct electrical flow. Now we connect the brown wire, which is our line, to the line supply. Now this is the spinner motor. Its white wire is the common wire, so I connect it to the common. I cover it properly, and the job is done correctly. Now we are left with two wires. So look, we have a five microfarad capacitor here. Along with this, there is another capacitor as well, which I will also show you. Now look here, this is a combined capacitor. All the information is written on it. It contains two capacitors. One is 13 microfarads and the other is five microfarads. The five micro F side is for the spinner and the 13 micro F side is for the washing motor. But here, I am using this capacitor, so I will install it. With this, it is installed. Now the gray wire that is coming from the timer needs to be connected here. You can connect it to either one of the points. This is because the motor is designed to run in both directions, so connecting it to either point will allow it to start. With this, our connection here is complete. In the same way, we can carry out the work on this timer and this selector switch. So look here, the timer. As I explained earlier, the brown wire acts like a common wire. I showed you this before. It comes here, and after that, the gray wire goes into the selector switch. And if we look closely at the selector switch, you can see that it has two points inside. Through these points, the connections are made and broken as it operates. After this, the purple and green wires come here. The purple and green connections come here, as I have already explained to you. And the red and yellow wires go down to the motor. I'll show you. See, both of these wires are going down toward the motor, so I connect them as well. So here we have the motor, and with it we have a 10 microfarad capacitor. We will connect this capacitor here. So this becomes one motor wire, which can be connected at either point, and in the same way, the yellow wire is connected to the yellow. Then we have the red wire. We connect the red wire to the capacitor, 
After that, we also connect the motor wire. Now the motor has a blue wire, which is the common wire. I will connect this blue wire to the neutral. So now all the connections are complete. Now look, the selector switch will always stay on one point, whether you set it to gentle wash or normal wash. Now I have already connected the power and I turn the timer on. You can see that the motor has not started yet. Now what we will do is connect this point and then the motor will start. You can see that the motor has started and as soon as I released it, the motor stopped. Now let's move to the washing side. What we will do is rotate the timer. You can see that the motor has started. Now see, it stopped for a moment. Earlier it was running clockwise, and now it has started running anti-clockwise. So this system is now completely working. Now I'll tell you about a mistake I made. If you have already written it in the comments, that's very good. If not, and you couldn't find it, then I'll explain it to you. So the thing is, this motor does not work without a capacitor. Earlier, I had not connected the capacitor here. That was my mistake. These motors can handle capacitors of 14, 15, or 10 microfarads. The motor I have here requires a 10 microfarad capacitor. Now, one wire will be connected to the red wire, and the other wire will be connected to the yellow wire. In this way, the motor will work properly. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.